Welcome to episode 4 of my Java tutorial series. In this episode we're going to talk about user input so we can see what the user types on their keyboard and depending on what they type we can do different kind of things. And if there's anything you don't understand just leave a comment down below and I'll be answering it as soon as I can. And there's also a link to the source codes in the description of this video with additional comments that will clarify each and every line of this program so maybe that will answer your questions. Now let's start coding and just type along and try to change it to your own liking and as you can see I've already created a class and the main method. I already created this code that prints welcome to the screen and to do this I access the print line method through the system class. And the system and string classes are imported by default. And importing means that you can use the methods inside of an external class. To get input from the user we have to use a class called scanner. And the scanner class is not imported by default. So we first have to tell Java that we want to use its methods. To do this you have to go outside of the body of the class at the top of the file and type import. And then the class name that you want to import. Type java.util.scanner. And scanner is just one of many classes inside the java.util folder. By typing a folder name dot asterisk you import all the classes in that folder at once. Now that we've imported the scanner class we can use its methods. And to do this we have to create a scanner object. And an object can be seen as a copy of a class and you can have a lot of copies from the same class. Just like in real life you can have a lot of bicycles which are all just copies of the idea of a bicycle. So a class just has the instructions for the object to do certain things. To do this we have to type scanner, then we have to give it a name, user input. And then we have to assign a new type of scanner to it, so type new. Scanner and in between the parentheses we have to type what we want to scan. We want to scan the keyboard so type system dot in. So now we've created a new scanner object called user input that knows all the things that are inside of the scanner class. So it can scan for something that you've entered on your keyboard. Don't worry about understanding that because we haven't covered objects yet. Now that we have a working scanner we want to have a string variable called name and it's going to be equal to an empty string and an int variable called age which is going to be equal to zero. Then we tell the user that they should enter their age. Enter age. After this string has been printed and the user entered their age we want to retrieve that data and assign it to the variable age. So we type age equals and then user input the name of our scanner dot next int and then we want to print the variable h back to the user. So the program will print enter h then it gets to this line and the program will pause until the user has entered their h and hit enter. After that it will continue the program and print h. Let's run it and enter our h 17 enter and it prints 17 back to the user. But if we use something else like 2.5 it will give us an error, input mismatch exception, because we use the method next int, and that can only accept an integer. 2.5 is a double, so that won't fit in there and it will give the input mismatch exception. To check if the user has entered an integer, we can use another method inside of an if statement. So type if and then user input dot has next int. Create a body. And this will check if the next thing that's entered is an integer. If so, it will execute this code. Otherwise, this code won't be run and the error won't be thrown. If the user enters something that's not an integer, we want to tell them that they should enter an integer next time. So, enter int next time. And this will only print if the next thing isn't an integer. So we're going to try that. We're going to type 2.5 and we'll say enter int next time and 0 because the beginning value of h is 0. Now we're going to do the exact same thing for our name. System.out.print, enter name. Create the if statement again to check if something has been entered because we're going to use another method. Has next line. And this will check if there's something on the next line that's checking at the moment. Create a body, 
and then assign what's on the next line to the variable name. So user input dot next line. Then we also want to print our name, so change this print statement to name plus space plus h. We run the program, then we can enter our name again, 17, and then something weird happens because we don't get a chance to enter our name. And that's because when we entered our h, 17, we also pressed the enter key. And the enter key creates an invisible character over here, but Java can see that character. So when we check for the next line, it is still on this line because the invisible enter character is still here. To actually check the real next line and be able to enter something, we have to get rid of that invisible enter character by typing user input dot next line. So now that line is really done, the 1 and the 7 are in the h variable and the invisible enter key has also been retrieved but not assigned to a variable so we're not doing anything with it. Then when it gets to this line it will scan the actual next line. Execute the program to see it working. Enter our h, 17, then our name, Richard Kutzreiter, quite a long name, and it will say Richard Kutzreiter and the variable h, 17. There is another method and that's called has next and just next. And what this will do is when we execute the program we can enter our h, 17, and our name, Richard Kutzreiter, but it will only get the first token in the actual string. So when there's a space, it will not get anything after it. So that's the difference between next and next line. And the next line method will also retrieve the invisible enter key, so you don't have to use this piece of code after you already used the next line method, because that is already dealt with. And that was everything you needed to know about user input. If there was anything you didn't understand, like the difference between next and next line, or why we need the extra next line statement after another next statement, just leave a comment down below and I will answer it. But before you do that, you might want to take a look at the source code that can be found in the description. It contains additional comments that will clarify every line, so maybe that will answer your questions. Before I sign off, I want you to know that it's important to practice, so maybe you could try to create a program that asks the user about their age and name, and depending on what they entered, you can print different messages back to them. If you manage to create such a program, just post it in the comments down below so everyone can see how you did it. Hopefully, I will see you all in the next video of my Java tutorial series. Bye bye!